The wonderful thing about Chianti is you got you go over a hill and you've got a vineyard in a place which tastes can and must taste totally different to the next hill. Uh, I mean, where, at, where we're standing now, we're at 480, 500 meters. We have a vineyard at 700 meters up on a hill over there. Here it's uh, limestone and clay. You go 50 meters in that direction, it's just limestone and, and galestro, which is a sandstone uh, slate. Um, so everything changed. You go 100 meters, you go two kilometers. Um, unfortunately, two days ago, we had uh, a big thunderstorm and the next door village got totally destroyed and we're fine so far. So, I mean, that's what happens. You get, you get in, in this area, everything is, everything is different. Each vineyard speaks for itself. So that is quite Burgundian, isn't it? Every few meters, yeah. something's going to change. And Unfortunately, we haven't been able to do the crew system here and the zoning system. So, I mean, that's what we're looking for next is to, is to, is to emphasize those differences in the vineyard areas and the, and the villages. Chianti and Chianti Classico has caused a lot of confusion in the minds of consumers. Why is that and what would your remedy be for making it a little bit easier for consumers to understand what is a massive geographical area? I mean, if, if we leave it as it is, I think the, it's very important that the, you understand the difference that Chianti Classico is an area which is different or is, is politically and socially different from the Chianti area. Um, me personally, uh, the, the, there are great wines coming from Chianti. Uh, we've got people making wine in, in Rufino, as we were just talking about, and uh, in, in the Florentine areas and the Pisa areas, uh, which they have their own character, but they're as good as anything we're making in Chianti Classico. I couldn't get into trouble saying, for saying that, but that's what I believe. So you're saying that um, rather than get rid of the Classico, we'll just call the whole thing Chianti, exactly. and then maybe label it by village, just yeah. explain some of the famous villages and what the zoning thing is? I mean, the zoning, you could, you could break it down. Within Chianti Classico, you've got Panzano, which is only 20 minutes from here, uh, Gaioli, um, and then you go outside, you go to Loro Cefena, and then you go towards uh, Siena, you've got San Casciano, and then go, go further, further afield. I mean, unfortunately, history has dedicated, has, has given us that, that history that we have county even in Pisa but let's deal with it and I think uh, we can make some, we can make a big a big thing a big marketing movement if we throw it all together and, and let's just do villages which need to be defined obviously but uh, um, that's the way I do it. So you would have Chianti always a Chianti it could be Chianti Pisa or Chianti Florence or Chianti Siena or Chianti Greve in, in Chianti or Chianti... I'd go smaller right. I'd say if Pisa then you need to go I don't okay. know whatever, um, that, that I don't even know the villages in Pisa, but uh, um, around here you do Panzano, Gaioli, Castelnuovo, and then you go further afield, Monteregioni, and then feel further afield. You're an Italian bureaucrat, stream. they'd love to have your model just every last <laughs> square meter with its own name, it'd be absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it'd be total mayhem, but uh, I think in the end, the name Chianti or Chianti, as a lot of Americans and English call it, um, it, you know, you, you even read on Decanter or in, on, in these wine magazines, they talk about Chianti, and when, what they really mean is Chianti Classico. So if, even if they can't get it right, then who can? <laughs>